Hello, Gemini, Gemini Rising, and Gemini Moon people. This is your weekly astrological and tarot forecast for the week starting October 10th, 2016. And I wanted to just kind of give you a quick reminder about how these things kind of go. Um, a lot of folks were kind of wondering, you didn't say this about this in the astrology last week. Well, no, I didn't, because I put that in the monthly astrology for... Uh, for you know for for October so if you didn't know that I do have monthly horoscopes as well and those ones are definitely talking about big seasonal changes things that kind of go on forever uh, or, or at least for more than a week and for the weeklies I figured it might be much more relevant to discuss things that are more on a day-to-day -day basis and so I didn't forget I just didn't copy and paste so if you are interested in those you can always go to the main channel page and look up the astrology horoscopes for October Okay, so let's have a look and see what is going on this week. Well, as you may have already known, um, Mercury has recently moved into Libra, your fifth house of love, romance, creativity, and your relationships with your children. After house four, the houses get much more diverse. Um, and with Mercury in your fifth house for the next few weeks, we are definitely seeing speed up developments happening in all of these areas. If you have a self-employment or a creative project you are trying to monetize or get off the ground, Mercury is going to be making developments happen there a lot more quickly than normal. We're also seeing a lot more opportunities for love and romance because with Mercury and Jupiter in this same house, those of you who are single or looking are definitely going to be having a lot of options to choose from at this point in time. You know, it's going to be manifesting a lot of people to talk to, you know, so if you've been having a hard time getting in circulation, this is exactly what you need. This is also a great opportunity to open up uh, any kind of challenged or closed avenues of communication with a child, maybe even a parent with you as the child, if that's what we also need to be getting taken care of in October. But this week, we've got Mercury conjunct Jupiter in this area on Tuesday. And it's a gorgeous time for anyone who has been looking to, again, get their love life, you know, sort of revved up, whether you are single or looking. It's a very romantic angle. And um, this is definitely like the honeymoon zone. You know, like I always say, in astrology, the fifth house is kind of like the dating zone. It's the, it's the whirlwind romance zone. You know, that first three months of any relationship where things are really like you know, it's the infatuation zone, and that's not a dirty word. And we definitely have infatuation on the rise uh, in the, you know this week, and that could be you know maybe becoming infatuated again with our current partner, or a very strong infatuation with somebody new. Again, infatuation isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's just you know the only reason people don't like it is because they realize it's on the way to love. It's not really love, but again, remember, it's on the way to love. And this may actually be a, a new person or perhaps even a couple um, that can kind of turn that crank for you. On Thursday, we've got Mercury forming a tense square to Mars from this area. And Mars is currently in your eighth house of shared resources and intimacy. And when Mercury and Mars come together, we've got to pay attention, you know, especially in a clash like this, we've got to pay attention where things can get a bit excessive and maybe there's a bit of oversharing going on, you know, because Mercury is a planet of communication and Mars can be a planet of passion, but it can also bring hostility with that passion. And oversharing can cause a lot of problems when it comes to our relationships in general, especially in new relationships. You know, if maybe it's not a good idea to be trying to have talk therapy with somebody we've only known for a month, you know, or maybe it's not a good idea f to allow um, a child or a parent to turn us into a therapist when that's not our role. You know, it's one of those kinds of energies where it's really important to pay attention to where um, things can get kind of uncomfortable, maybe even a bit too sensitive by oversharing um, for the sake of oversharing. You know, there could be some conflicts of, that come up from that because it's not coming out in a very well-paced way. You know, sometimes we tend to blurt when Mars and Mercury clash like this. So let Thursday kind of come and go, okay? And just let it be a nice relaxing time. Not, you know, I'm just talking, I'm not talking about sharing being bad. Remember, I don't think black and white, I think in color. I'm talking about over, not regular. So what is going on with the spiritual advice card of this week? Well, we do have the card of the cunning woman, funny enough, 
what was I just talking about? The cunning woman talks about understanding timing, all right? It's talking about practicing more observation and knowing when to keep silent or at least keep, you know, keep things to a minimum with communications. You might receive information this week, um, maybe even hints and tidbits that make you feel like you need to act at a moment's notice. But the cunning woman talks about these things not being fully developed yet. You don't need to react to something or certainly not put down money on something or, 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 or throw your whole schedule out of whack on something that's not even fully formed or developed yet. You know, people might be giving you information that's only half complete or halfway through developing, you know. And so if it's only halfway through developing, we're not going to be making the right decision if it's not even all the way there yet. So the, the cunning woman is saying pay attention to when people are trying to prematurely um, – I guess you could say conclude from conjecture this week and certainly do not take any of it to be the 100% honest to, God, honest to God truth, not until it's fully formed. For your earth sector, when it comes to work and finances, we have the five of wands inverted. Business may be a little bit slow this week. You know, I'll just be frank. Business could be a little bit slow this week with the Five of Wands inverted because it does show that, you know, there may be a lot less activity coming to you directly with the Five of Wands inverted. Whether you are looking for new work or you are currently working or you're just looking for new financial opportunities, it's not coming to you. It's not being drawn to you. However, there is always a good side to this. With the Five of Wands inverted, competition is also diminishing for you this week. So if you do need to compete for hours, you're trying to compete for sales, you're trying to compete for customers, anything along those lines, or jobs. We're also noticing that the competition isn't necessarily putting up as well. You know, everyone's kind of taking way too passive a role, it seems, this week. So it's a great time to get ahead, or it's a great time to put your feet up, whichever one you've been looking forward to doing this week. For your communications with air, when it comes to your messages you get from friends and from relatives, we do have the justice card upright, which is actually a really nice card to be getting because this is one of the few cut and dry yes answers in the cards. And this actually can talk about some kind of contract or some kind of agreement being mutually agreed upon, um, maybe even a promise or a pact being made good on this week um, if somebody owes you a favor or you're waiting for somebody to keep that promise or somebody is just simply remembering it for you and you forgot that they did it in the first place it can be a very pleasant surprise this can also be great news for those of you who are looking for authorization and clearance to come from a higher authority if you need to get the okay or the go-ahead from um, you know, a, a government agency, a civic agency, um, your boss, a school, your landlord, whatever. We definitely have them agreeing with you and allowing you to go forward with whatever it is uh, they needed to clear. For your challenge this week with fire, we do have the Page of Cups upright. And this card is basically saying, you know, I think that sometimes, Gemini, we may have a hard time um, how would I phrase, how would I phrase it? I'm not saying you as a person, Gemini, but I, you know, you know, well, not you as a person, there's going to be like, a, you know, over a thousand of you watching this, you know, I'm not making this personal, but, um, with the, with the page of cups up, right, your challenge this week is to make sure that you can actually give, you know, loving and encouraging compliments, even if you don't feel like they are earned. And that might sound kind of strange, you know, but the focus on morale is very important this week. The focus on morale and the focus on being able to make sure that other people are staying encouraged and staying encouraged with positive reinforcement. You may be tempted to go into a place of negative reinforcement this week. Um, but I think that with the Page of Cups, it's one of the most interesting cards to get it as a challenge because that, that positive, you know, good reinforcement is actually also teaching people what it takes to give you good positive reinforcement. So obviously we can't teach somebody how to love and encourage us by not loving and encouraging them. You know, that doesn't work. And so this week it might be one of those weeks where you're kind of tempted to kind of go towards negative reinforcement, you know, and get maybe get a little punitive. Maybe when you handle your love or your kids or something like that, go the other direction. For your emotions with water and your romantic life, we've got the Lovers Upright. Talk about a wonderful way to end this reading. The Lovers card always talks about a pact or a promise. Again, very similar to that Judgment card, but also the opportunity for commitment and exclusivity. Those of you who are looking for a new partner will most likely find a lot of candidates this week, possibly because Jupiter is involved. 
too many to choose from who all want the same thing as you. And that could also be enough, um, because the Lover's Card Upright does talk about a win-win agreement or, you know, again, that perfect sync, the puzzle pieces coming together in our chemistry with this new love. And even with our existing love, you know, if those you and your partner have been having a hard time finding a win-win or reaffirming, um, you know, your love, your loyalty, or kind of just getting the spark back into things, again, the Lover's Card really does speak to a lot more time spent one-on-one, -on -one, really hashing that out, but in the best of ways. So I hope that that is what happens with you guys this week. Don't forget to check your rising your moon, of course. And if you'd like to get a session with me, you can always follow the links below or go to integrativemysticism.com.